breaking news has just come through that federal government backbencher Craig Kelly has quit the Liberal Party. Political reporter Jane Norman joins us now from Parliament House in Canberra. Jane, g'day, what can you tell us? Yeah, right. Well, the excitement never stops here at Parliament House, Joe. So in the Coalition Party Room meeting this morning, we have heard from several Liberal MPs who tell us that Craig Kelly got up unexpectedly and handed a letter of resignation to the Prime Minister. He explained to his colleagues, who were all shocked by this move, uh, that he uh, did not want to be a distraction for the Morrison government, but at the same time he wanted to stay true to his conscience. This has quite significant ramifications for the government. Right now in the House of Reps, there are 151 seats. At the election, the government won 77 seats. It needed 76 for a majority. Well, Craig Kelly's decision today to leave the Liberal Party and move to the crossbench means that the coalition only has 76 seats, so just a majority, but one of those seats is actually the Speaker. So on the floor, the government now only has 75 of 151 seats. So the government is now going to need to rely on the crossbench, including Craig Kelly, uh, to pass contentious legislation. Now, Mr Kelly is... Um, Probably no stranger to many viewers. He has been in the headlines recently because the Prime Minister criticised him for pushing alternative theories or alternative therapies rather for COVID-19 on his social media platforms. He also appeared in a podcast alongside anti-vaxxer uh, Pete Evans and received uh, some heavy criticism for that. But what might have uh, prompted his decision today is that, of course, an election can be called any time from August uh, and and his pre-selection uh, was likely to be challenged. So he has, for the past two or three elections, needed to be saved um, from pre-selection um, challenges by the Prime Minister of the day. He is the member for Hughes in New South Wales. Um, it could well be that he was facing another challenge. And I think Scott Morrison has made it clear in the wake of the sort of, uh, you know, controversy over his COVID-19 comments that perhaps he wasn't going to be saved once again. Um, but yes, the news is, is that Liberal backbencher Craig Kelly has quit the party to sit on the crossbench. However, he has guaranteed the government that he will provide confidence and supply, which basically means that he will help pass the budget, the country will continue to run and public servants will continue to get paid. Taking into account the statements he's made on various issues over the years, Jane, are there any particularly particular policy areas that spring to mind which, mean, which means it could become problematic for the government now on the floor of the House to get legislation through? Look, at the moment, um, well, probably one of his um, most, uh, you know, he's a vocal critic, of, 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 a sceptic rather, of climate change. Um, he um, has questioned the science behind it. Um, he's questioned whether um, the government should be sort of setting long-term targets. That, though, we don't necessarily think is going to be sort of legislated if the government does push ahead with uh, mandating a uh, net zero emissions by 2050. Um, so, to be honest, at this stage, it's a little bit unclear I mean, it certainly makes him a bit more relevant because now the government will need to rely on crossbenchers like Bob Catter, like Craig Kelly, to pass any contentious bills. But um, I'll have to go and see, actually, what's on the notice paper yeah. to let you know precisely what might be in contention. But, yeah, this news, um, you know, has certainly shocked us here in the gallery, but likewise his colleagues. He just made the announcement within the last half an hour. And, uh, yeah, taking into account the statements that he's made over um, the years, does, does, does it really come as a shock to everyone that he would make a move like this? Well, I think it's uh, a shock because it's pre-election. I mean, he actually has threatened to quit the Liberal yeah. Party before if his pre-selection was threatened. So, no, he is certainly no stranger to making these kinds of threats. But I think people are a bit surprised that he's actually followed through on this threat because, uh, you know, it is a massive move to quit the party that has supported you for many, many years and move to the crossbench and make life much more difficult for the coalition to sort of get its agenda through the parliament. So, certainly, he has lost potentially, a lot of friends today within the party. Um, but like I said, he has made these kind of threats before, but I don't think it was necessarily expected that he would take this action, particularly because when he did receive that, you know, now infamous dressing down from the Prime Minister, he seemed to sort of fall into line and say, you know, I support the government's vaccine rollout and I'll, um, you know, cease my, um, you know, theories on social media. Well, obviously he's had time to think about that and now he believes that he wants to stay true to his conscience 
and leave the Liberal Party to sit on the crossbench. And Jane, just very briefly on the other big news out of Canberra this morning, uh, what's the latest from the Coalition Party room on this proposal for the job seeker payment? Yeah, well, we're still expecting the Prime Minister to stand up in the next hour or so to announce this formally, but the Coalition Party Room has endorsed the government's plan to increase the job seeker allowance by $25 a week, taking the total payment to about $307 a week. It is what you'd describe as a modest increase, given that pre-pandemic job seeker payment was $40 a day. So it's effectively just an extra $4 a day. Uh, it has already been slammed by the peak welfare body, which is described it as measly. Um, Access Economics um, partner Chris Richardson, who had been pushing for a more substantial increase of, you know, at least $75 a week, not $25 a week. Well, he says it's good that both major parties now agree job seeker needs to be increased, but this is simply not enough. So, Right. It'll be interesting to hear from the Labor Party because they've also been pushing for an increase but haven't sort of put a dollar figure on it. Yeah. So we'll hear as well from them to see what they think of today's plan. OK, thanks for, for keeping us across those latest developments in Canberra. Jane Norman there.